all with us worshiping today. It's just a blessing to see all of you. And we are we're just always blessed. Yeah. Anyway, you see me shirt? I do it often. It's a good idea. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Alrighty, we uh joys and concerns and greetings. Uh as far as I know, we don't have any joys or concerns because nobody told me anything. Okay, okay y'all. I have enjoyed that our friends, Bobby and Melissa, that we've been praying for, are here with us today and they have a concern. Oh yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, we uh, have a lady that we know, a friend of ours, she's a this way in in the hospital and she had a on her spine at first. Mm -hmm. And she's now paralyzed all but one arm. And uh, we needed to get her on the prayer list. And uh, another friend of ours named Carl, um, he needs to be on the prayer list to be the hospital for And uh, another friend named Jimmy, he needs to be on the prayer list too also. Jimmy and Carl, and what was your friend in this uh, place? Crystal. Crystal. Yes, uh, prayers for the friends of this lovely couple who are going through multiple troubles. And Crystal especially is now paralyzed except for what? For an arm. Wow. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Um, I can't even imagine. So keep Crystal and Jimmy and Carl in your prayers along with our prayer list of four people. Um, and on the back is happy birthdays and anniversaries. So Joy's on that side. Well, thanks yeah. for y'all's prayers. Everybody You're quite welcome. For us. Thank you. Yeah. Pray. Pray, so more. Blessed, pray more. Pray more. Pray more. Uh, pray without ceasing. That's what we're told to do. All right. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Will you all remember to pray for Brian and Heidi in the camera today? This afternoon. This, uh, please, uh, extra prayer, prayers for Brian and Heidi. Uh, Brian's dad uh, passed away last week, week before, and his services this afternoon at Calvin to 2 o'clock. So please keep them, their, their boys and family and friends in your prayers on the passing of Brian's dad. Anyone else? All right. Will you please stand as you're able to call the Oh, I'm sorry. Sit back down. <laughs>
with confidence. Let us confess our sins together. God of justice and mercy, we confess that we put ourselves first and trust in things that will not last. We desire the evil and scorn and good. We gather up power and wealth and push aside the needy in our way. O Lord, be gracious to us in spite of our great sin. Teach us to love and
We know that the word of God is far more than words on paper, and the writer of Hebrews knew that. His letter expresses the power that scripture has to transform lives. One of the commentaries I read started out with, the letter to the Hebrews gives me a headache. It's not because the book itself is a headache, it's because it's not easy. The meaning doesn't jump off the page, but requires reflection. If I want to get to the bottom of the letter, I have to take a deep dive. Well, I have to agree. And the Bible study group on Monday night had to agree with that too. This is not an easy book. No one can pinpoint who wrote it. Some scholars speculate that Paul wrote it, but it's not written in the typical Paul fashion. Scholars seem to agree that it is written more like a sermon instead of a letter, and they believe that it was written before 70 AD, probably around 67 AD, because of the references to the temple. The temple in Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. The interesting thing about our scripture for today, and this is how the lectionary people put the, the scriptures together, is the tone and content of each section is quite different. Verses 12 and 13 are definitely a word of warning and judgment, while verses 14 to 16 are much more comforting. In part one, we begin with the word of God is living and active. The word has a life of its own. Remember the parable about the farmer sowing seeds that Jesus told? Some seeds fell on the path, some fell on rocky ground, some fell among the thorns, and other seed fell on good soil. In each case, the seed had a life of its own. The seed grows and bears fruit because it is alive. And anything with life is active, so the Word of God grows in us. The more we meditate on the words of the Bible, the more it affects us. There is a spiritual energy in the Word of God. It is active. But the next part really got the Monday evening study group talking. The Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Other versions of the Bible in our group said from the Living Bible, it is sharper than the sharpest dagger. And from the message, his powerful word is sharp as a surgeon's scalpel. When we think of swords, we think of warfare and violence. So why does the author use images like this? So think about yourself. Is your life an open book or are there things that you keep hidden from other people? Do you always admit when you've done something wrong? We are not that open about our inner feelings, and we don't share those sins that we ought to have not done. The author of Hebrews is saying that we need to face up to who we really are and stop pretending. The Word of God has incredible power, and when it goes inside us, it becomes like a surgeon's knife. It cuts and divides. The Word of God finds our bad habit, ha attitudes, our rebellious spirit, spirit, our lustful hearts, our hypocrisy, our greed, our hatred, and our unforgiving spirit. The Living Bible says the Word of God cuts swift and deep into our innermost thoughts and desires with all their parts, exposing us for who we really are. Before God, we are naked and laid open before the eyes of him with whom we must explain all that we have done. We can't hide from God. God sees all and knows all. He knows our thoughts and our motives, and we will have to come clean with all we have not done on that day at the pearly gates when we will have to give account to God. So lots of warnings and judgment, and then we have part two, which is much less condemning. The author talks about Jesus, the Son of God, and our great high priest. On Monday night, we got a little hung up on the idea of Jesus as a great high priest, because a priest is not part of our tradition. 
This is where we have to remember who the original audience was for this sermon. These were fairly new Christians who knew the Jewish tradition and they knew the Old Testament where the priest was a very important person. For the Israelites, the tabernacle was the heart of the community. It was more than a religious shrine. They believed it was the home of Yahweh. One commentator explains it this way. When the sun settled behind the horizon and the cooking fires were baked to save wood as the people traveled through the wilderness, one tent continued to have a light on all night. In the heart of the camp, the light glowed in the fellowship hall of the tabernacle. Yahweh kept vigil while the community slept. In the morning and evening, a meal could be taken with Yahweh, the sacrifices burnt so that Yahweh might consume the divine portion by way of inhaling the smoke. And the feasting room was constantly made ready for the king to meet with his subjects. And once a year, a representative who stood for both God and God's people, the high priest, communed deeply with God in the sacred private space known as the Holy of Holies, where God's merciful throne, the Ark of the Covenant, stood. That high priest would perform a sacrifice of blood which would bring forgiveness to God's people. A Jewish audience would be completely comfortable with this talk of a high priest because they were familiar with this ritual. The author of Hebrews is now telling his audience that we don't need any of those high priests anymore because Jesus is now the great high priest and is sitting at the right hand of God all the time. Jesus can sympathize with us because he understands us. Jesus is not only God, but human as well. He was tempted just as we are, but was without sin. Someone from the Bible study group recalled an illustration of standing at the pearly gates, and there is a long list of things that you did not do in your lifetime. And just as you are expected to explain yourself, Jesus steps in and says to the gatekeeper, don't worry about that list. I took care of it. She's good to go. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, he is now the mediator between God and human beings. And we should have the confidence to approach the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help in our times of need. Until the high, unlike the high priest in the ancient times who was separated from the people, Jesus as the new great high priest is not separated from us. He is always with us. He always has our back. Compassion and kindness, grace and mercy are there when we face our times of need. This is not so much about when we fail as it is when we face hard times and are confronted with temptations which threaten to overwhelm us. We are going to sin because we are sinful people. And Jesus wants us to confess our sins and try to do better. But when we fail, Jesus is there for us with grace and mercy. The message says, so let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy, accept the help. Suddenly, we get an entirely different view of this whole judgment matter. The difference is knowing the judge is Jesus. And that is the good news of our faith. Amen. Let us sing 772, Live and Hope.
God of our joyful days and our aching days, we give thanks that we can trust you with the heaviest parts of our hearts. And so we bring to you the burdens of our complicated world, and we ask you to lighten the load. Yet even in the midst of an avalanche of challenging news, we spot the sliver of moon in the night, and so our prayer of longing is punctuated by gratitude. Hear both our cries for relief and our whirling song of joy, O oh God. Sometimes our words of lament get stuck in our throats, but we yearn for a better world, one that brings to life your plans for wholeness and well-being to fulfillment for all. Heal our warring madness and teach us the ways of peace with our global neighbors, within our polarized society and in our local communities. Breathe life into the lungs of those who are trampled down. Turn the hearts of oppressors and stir our compassion and energies when indifference sets in for other people's struggle. We raise to you the cries of those who may be feeling forsaken, those longing for relief from natural disaster, women and girls in societies which limit their opportunity and access to power, refugees who long for welcome and safety, overburdened health care workers, and all who wonder if someone, anyone, will take notice of their pain and extend comfort and hope. Thank you for small signs of kindness and possibility in days that are bleak. The red bird perched on a bare wet branch, one hand brushing, brushing another in kindness, the familiar tune of happy birthday, the smell of baking bread. Thank you for small signs of possibility and fresh hope that sparkle amidst the fog of ache, laughter that surprises us, children's imaginations, a perfect crisp apple, the first promising notes of a song we know by heart. We are grateful that you hear our prayers, whether we are brimming with joy or sealing with anger, crying out for justice or sighing with grief. Hear us now as we turn to the reliable words of the prayer for all our days, the one that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Freely you have received, freely give. If you have offerings or thoughts to, uh, there's a plate in the back.
whether it is with spring in your step or with resolve for the slog, God goes with you, before you, beside you, and surrounding you. You may entrust the shiniest parts of yourselves to our faithful God, and you may entrust the shadows too. For the same God our ancestors trusted with their cries, hears our cries as well. And their witness assures us that there is no shame in the cry that our, with, that our God with us will not let us down. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you all, this day and every day.